Hi, welcome back. I'm Chef David Gromwald with the uh, River Valley Technical Center Culinary Arts Program, and today we're going to prepare some catfish. Catfish comes from Lake Champlain, and uh, we're going to look at it. First, we're going to do traditional catfish, which is uh, deep fried with some corn breading, and it's going to look uh, just terrific. I have my oil preheated over here. Um, it's going to be nice and hot. And we're going to go through standard breading procedure, which involves uh, dredging the filet into some seasoned flour and then into some egg wash. My egg wash is right here and I want to go ahead and put some acid into it. This is merely just egg and milk mixed together. Approximately four ounces of milk and about two eggs. We're going to pour it right into my pan here and that's going to provide a nice glue for my fish to hold the cornbread breading on top of it. Now I'm looking at my filet here. I want to go ahead and cut down the lateral line of the fish. You want to remove that little strap a cartilage right in there uh, simply because it definitely has a different texture and flavor to it. I'm going to take this, I'm going to cut it into nice strips that are uniform in size and that's going to give me uh, really nice catfish fillets. Delightful in the summertime, really good flavor and um, we're going to start by dredging those fillets right into the flour here. Okay, so standard breading procedure, you want to keep one hand dry and one hand wet. All right, I'm looking at my uh, meat here. Anything that I missed when I was cutting, make sure I take any undesirable pieces off of there. And there we go. So I'm gonna throw these catfish right around inside my seasoned flour, which has, oh, some salt, some pepper, a little bit of um, thyme and rosemary. What I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna add a little bit of cayenne pepper to my cornmeal, which is gonna give that catfish a little bit of zing when I go ahead and uh, and fry it up. So I'm going to mix my cayenne pepper right in with my cornmeal. It's all set to go. Remember my salt, my sodium is right in my seasoned flour and then after the flour we see the catfish filet is going right into the, the egg wash which is uh, seasoned with lemon juice. You don't really have to get your hands dirty. You can actually just move the egg wash back and forth and uh, coat the fillets. Then I can actually take my fillets out of there and then they can go right into the cornmeal. And we're gonna take this guy up, gonna go right in, and I'm gonna dredge it right down. I have a dry hand and a moist hand. You want to, don't wanna have any kind of exposed skin on the catfish because that's gonna be directly subjected to the oil itself. So here we go, we're doing standard breading procedure. My catfish fillets are all breaded, I can't wait. I'm gonna grab my hot oil, I'm gonna bring it right over here and we're gonna fry this. We notice that it's already smoking, super hot. The oil you wanna use is a peanut oil. I didn't have any peanut oil, but we're gonna use, um, what we're gonna use here is uh, canola oil and we're gonna drop our fillets right in. Notice when I drop this fillet in, I lay the fish in and then I pull my hand back in a way, careful not to, not to splash myself. All right, there we go. Frying with oil, always super dangerous. Make sure there's no children around or anything like that. Here I have my landing spot, nice dry paper towel. Catfish fillets only take a very short period of time to fry right up. Slide them right out like so. And there's my cornmeal catfish filet all set and ready to go. All right, we noticed that this did not take very long. Didn't take very long. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put together my, uh, my plate with my catfish. I'll put my arugula right on top like so. Take my catfish on top of the arugula. Looks delicious. Take some green beans. We'll put some green beans around the side here. We also have some nice pineapples, give it some fruity flavor. The arugula has got a peppery flavor. It's gonna accent that cayenne that's in there. And we're also gonna put, it, put together some emulsified uh, sauces on this as well. And now I've prepared a couple of uh, carrot waffle cruts, or they also refer to as gofrets. And we'll put some carrots on there, make them look nice. I'm ready for my sauce. I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple of sauces here for you. The first one 
It's going to be uh, a basic tartar sauce. Everybody makes this stuff at home. All we need is a little bit of uh, sweet or dill relish, goes right into the mayonnaise, and some really fine diced onion, fine diced onion for flavor. A smidgen of salt, a little bit of white pepper, and we're good to go. Mayonnaise is always nice because it's an emulsion. You've got a lot of uh, ability to suspend different flavors in there. Now I'm going to finish it off with some nice lemon juice. And I'm going to stir that lemon juice right in so I have a great lemony flavor. And now I'm going to take a little cup that I have here of the mayonnaise. And there we have a catfish arugula salad that has got some really dynamic uh, flavors. Fresh, fried, ready to go. Would please anybody. All right, we're going to blacken the catfish, a famous Creole Southern style technique that was perfected by the folks down in the uh, New Orleans area and Louisiana bayous. Uh, this catfish is going to be served traditionally with a hot slaw and I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, you want to just take some green cabbage and a couple of onions and we want to do a nice thin cut julienne. We're going to take those, we'll go right into the bowl here. Now I'm going to take my cabbage and then I'm going to go and do the same thing with it. And you're going to notice that it takes a lot of cabbage once the cabbage cooks down. I'm going to mix it all in with my onion that I just cut up. I'm going to take a little bit of salt, a little bit of black pepper, and I've got some fresh herbs here, some rosemary. I like the rosemary on there. Um, thyme is usually a, a spice that you're going to use in your blackening mix. And I'm not going to put any thyme in my hot slaw, so I have a contrast in flavors and ready to go. And right back here, I'm going to put my skillet on and get my skillet nice and hot and get it ready to go. And I'll put some um, parsley in my uh, hot slaw here, toss it around a little bit. Okay, and we're ready to go. I want to make sure that my skillet's very hot so that when the cabbage goes in there, we're seeing the water and the salt cook out of the vegetable and uh, blending with the flavors of the onion. We're ready to go. We're going to drop our cabbage right in here. We can hear it popping. And then you can smell the rosemary right off, uh, right off the beginning. And it's smelling very nice, very nice. And my slaw is getting nice and browned on some of the areas around it. The browning is very, very critical when you're making the slaw. You want that flavor. You want that brown cabbage flavor. Now I can smell that the cabbage is starting to brown around the outside. The flavor is coming out on it. I'm ready to go ahead and add the acid. And once I add that acid, along with a little bit of water, we're going to see that this is going to stew. And it's going to turn into a nice hot slaw right off the bat. I've got some cider vinegar here. My vinegar's in there. Small amount of water. We can smell that and then go ahead and add some lemon since this is going on a fish dish. Here we go. All right, there's my hot slaw. So beautiful, so simple, ready to go. It's going to be a nice bed of cabbage that my blackened catfish is going to go on. Okay, looking very nice, very thick and meaty here, very thin down here. We know that this is going to take longer to cook up top. Now here I have a mortar and pestle. All right, the first thing I want to add is some salt. So I'm going to take, oh, maybe about a half a tablespoon of salt. Oregano, a good tablespoon of oregano, always important. Cayenne pepper, a little bit of cayenne pepper. Depending on what type of people are going to be eating this, if you've got older folks, you might not want to um, add as much pepper as I'm going to show you today. But traditionally in the South, it's a pretty high, high pepper dish. In addition to that pepper, we're going to add some black pepper. We're also going to add some white pepper. And then I'm going to go sweet. I'm going to go sweet with some paprika here. Sweet paprika, very nice, ready to go. Now I've got some thyme. You want to traditionally use a dried thyme leaf, but all I have today is the fresh thyme, so I want to go ahead and mince that. 
Now, unfortunately, the fresh herbs, you want to avoid fresh herbs when you're um, blackening because they're going to burn. They're going to burn up fairly quickly. Okay, so there's my thyme. Want to add a little bit of onion powder. And now I've got my mortar and pestle. This step is critical. Critical, critical, critical. If you're mixing your own herbs, that you mull them together and make sure that all those spices mash together with the salt. The salt creates osmosis, availability of cell walls to open up, and the blending of the spices. Okay, I've got the spice mix all set to go, and I'm ready to go ahead and dredge that catfish right in there. So I'll just put, dump this right onto a pan here. And I'm going to pack that spice right down into my fillet like so. I'm going to go just like so and pack it all around. All right, and this one, beautiful loin right here. That's a TV loin, if I've ever seen one. Okay, now that our fish is packed and dredged with the seasoning mix, we're going to preheat our aluminum uh, sizzle plates right over here. We'll put just a little bit of oil on them. So here we are with my, my catfish filet, and I'm gonna go right down onto my skillet here. I wanna just let that cook and cook and cook until the fish itself is nearly finished. A uh, cast iron skillet is much more desirable than aluminum in this case, but if this is all you have, it can work to your advantage. Now this one over here is loosened up fairly nicely. It is actually um, ready to be flipped onto the other side. Very delicate at this stage of the game. So I want to grab it with the tongs, and if it's too hot, remember you can always move it over, and there we go. That's a desired catfish blackening job there. Now if we look at this one here, he's also ready to go, and there's my blackened catfish. I took it off the flame as soon as I flipped it over. What we're looking for is the blackened flavor on the top of the fish. The bottom of the fish is going to cook naturally, carryover cooking, radiant heating from the skillet itself. It's just uh, sitting there. So you don't want to overcook it to where, you know, it's burnt to a crisp. Another way you can flash it and, and prepare the doneness very quickly is just simply add a little bit of water. And by adding a little bit of water, I've added another cooking method, which is a steam cook. And a nice thing about this particular method is that it gives you a little bit of a sauce that goes right into that, that catfish right there. Okay, now we're ready to plate this. And we see that it's very delicate and ready to go. And it can go right along the side there. Here's a little bit of uh, moisture that we talked about. It can go right on top of the fish. There you go. Now I prepared some remoulade sauce. Remoulade is uh, also a uh, southern style mayonnaise horseradish style sauce. It's got um, a high degree of lemon in it as well as it has uh, oregano, parsley, and different, different things like that. We certainly could take a vegetable like a green bean or some broccoli or some cauliflower, maybe some red peppers and uh, add that to this dish and it would, uh, it would definitely offset it. But just keep in mind, the fish cooks very rapidly. That's what enables us to do the flash fry very quickly and the blackening that blackens the outside of it and yet the inside is gonna be very tender and tasty. Gosh, folks, there you have it. You know, we've got a beautiful blackened uh, catfish prepared one way and then we've got the traditional deep fried with the cornmeal on the other way. Both are very delicious. Um, definitely want to add vegetables and fruit and different other nutritious things that you can have with them that's going to make a meal complete. Checking for doneness. Looking very nice yeah, looks white. Good. Very opaque. Wow, added with that tartar sauce, that is incredible. Wow, just a great flavor. I've had catfish from down in Texas, you mm -hmm. know, not too long ago, and, um, you know, really muddy waters, very, very different flavor than this. I, this is, for people who say, oh, I don't like catfish, it tastes muddy, Lake Champlain Channel Cat, it, this, this does not taste muddy whatsoever. This has incredible flavor. Before I completely fill up, I guess I gotta try the blackened. How spicy is it? Oh, it's awesome. Do Just you... exactly as I described. The initial flavor is robust, it's hot, it's salty, 
that's peppery and it dissipates very quickly on the palate. You did the spice perfect. It was right at that like it peaks quickly and then goes, it goes away. away. Yeah. It goes away. Well again, Chef, I want to thank you for uh, doing this for me. Oh, um, my pleasure. Just so much fun. Thanks for watching this episode of Vermont Master Anglers. For more content, visit our Facebook page at Vermont Master Anglers. If you're watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe.